Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Rust Belt Collector here, and today I figured I would do a two for one kind of video because both of these gaming greats, Black Series six inch figures, came in at the same time, uh, and I figured why not combine them because they are both GameStop exclusives and it seems fitting. I will have time codes down in the description below in case you want to skip ahead to the commando because we are going to start things off talking about this Jet Trooper. And unfortunately, I recorded this review already, and the footage went bad, so here we are recording it a second time. Unfortunately, no quick cut editing to show the opening process, but we will take a look at the packaging and then the figures individually. Both of these figures come packaged in what is the standard new Black Series packaging with the angle and the artwork here on the side. They both feature the new, like, kind of teal blue that is the color for the Gaming Greats line, which I think is really cool. I do like that they've gone ahead with this packaging. I think I've said that before. I just want to reiterate, I do like this packaging, even though I've kind of struggled to want to get every figure in the line, uh, of, of any line, really, to actually get the murals to line up. But, you know, it's cool for a concept. I like it. I like the design packaging, and I think a lot of collectors do appreciate being able to line boxes up like this. The artwork here is no exception. It's really, really nice looking. Actually, I have it backwards. So these two do coincide with each other. You can see the hand of the Jet Trooper there. This uh, spiked weapon is the uh, the Knight Brother. I did not pick that figure up, unfortunately. It's just not one that I'm really looking to get in the Black Series line. And then this hand up here, I believe, is the Royal Guard from the Force Unleashed. Another one that I just really can't justify picking up, but these two look really nice together. The artwork here is absolutely stunning. If they ever went ahead and did posters of this artwork, all the characters lined up from each, you know, color-coded wave, I would probably pick up a poster. I'm not going to get every single figure, but... You know, I'd drop some dollars on a poster with this beautiful artwork and all the characters from various lines, especially from movie lines like the Rogue One line. It would be cool to have a poster of this character art. Then, of course, on the back here, you have the little blurbs about the character as well as the same artwork from the side. You can pause here if you want to read that. All in all, there's nothing really terribly new about the packaging. It looks nice. It's really solid for on-card collectors. Of course, you know here on the Rust Belt Collector channel, I, I don't collect these on card. I don't have room for the boxes, and I really prefer having figures out of the box so you can pose them up and have them looking uh, more lifelike, I suppose. Now, as for the figures, first off, it's just really nice to get clone troopers in hand again. It seems like we had a bit of a dry spell there for a while, and now they're just rapid fire releasing gaming greats clone troopers, standard release clone troopers, vintage collection clone troopers. It's so cool. It's definitely something I appreciate, even when the figures may not be entirely perfect. <clears throat> Not that I'm talking about any one particular figure here, but, you know, it's good to have clone troopers on the shelves again. And truly, these have been on the shelves pretty abundantly. Like, I've seen probably half a dozen of these at each of my local game stops. That is very impressive. You don't typically see, you know, stuff in stock, especially not stuff in stock when it was supposed to release, you know, at the, at the release date. But these guys dropped right away and I saw plenty of them. And speaking of the Jet Trooper, let's take a look at him first. The The paint apps that we're seeing here all over the body are really, really nice. That's the first thing that stood out to me with this figure when I got it out of the packaging. I was kind of expecting all these stripes and all the fine markings to be more misaligned than they were. But I am pleased to say that nothing on this figure is misaligned, or at least that significantly. There might be, you know, if you zoomed in really, really close, you might be able to find a couple areas that were uh, misprinted or misaligned by a few millimeters, but overall, this looks really, really clean. Likewise, we also have this really deep shade of blue. I love the color on this guy. And likewise, they did a good job of matching the areas where it's cast blue versus painted blue. Like these legs here are all cast in the blue plastic. The knee pads are just painted blue, but that matches across the two of them pretty well. They didn't have like one be a little bit more opaque or something like that, because that can happen when you go from a paint app to a cast object, but overall it looks really nice. Now of course we've got to talk about the molds going on here because we do have another bit of a mishmash, like with the Elite Squad Trooper, only this time instead of the legs being old and the upper torso being new, Pretty much all of this is old except for the torso and the helmet. This part right here is the new Camino Clone Trooper mold. The arms, lower torso, and legs are all the Captain Rex mold, which is quite a curious choice, but 
Honestly, I think it works really well here, and while I don't think that Hasbro has quite decided which clone mold to stick with going forward, this would be a pretty good contender. My only complaint is really that they use the old legs. I know some people like the old legs because the knee pad kind of travels with the leg as it bends, but honestly, the new mold was so much better because of the fact that you could get them into kneeling positions with that swivel at the knee. But ultimately, this is pretty good. Like, just for, you know, a decent dynamic pose, standing on your shelf like that, there's nothing There's nothing to really complain about there. The proportions look good here. They've updated the Camino Clone Trooper helmet, so it has a much more proper look to it. It's still not quite right with the Revenge of the Sith look, but this is much better than what we got with the original Camino Clone Trooper. So, honestly, this is a step forward, step in the right direction in my book, and I'm not really going to complain if this is what we get for every Clone Trooper going forward. Now, in terms of accessories, he comes with a DC-17 sidearm like we get with Captain Rex, the ARC Troopers, and many other Clone Troopers. And then also we get this removable jetpack, which is just a recast and then repaint of the Jango Fett jetpack that we got from his Black Series release. And that just pegs into the back right there. So even though this is the Camino Clone Trooper torso, it is actually partially retooled to allow for that to be removable, just like so. I thought maybe the jetpack looked a little bit large on this character, but ultimately going back to the game, since this is from the Battlefront 2 game, uh, the jetpack is about that large. So ultimately, this is really accurate and looks good. So next up, we got to talk about articulation, and honestly, this combination works really well here. So we have the new Camino Clone Trooper torso, which means that we have the new neck as well. Double ball joint up into the head, as well as a ball joint here in the torso. That gives you a really nice side to side, as well as forward and back. Of course, you can look every which way besides that, but with the old Clone Trooper mold, you could really only hinge it forward and back. You had no side to side, so this one is a major improvement. At the shoulders, hinge and swivel all the way around. You can hinge those shoulders up to 90 degrees by sliding that shoulder pad underneath the torso. Now, because this arm technically wasn't designed to fit onto this torso, you can kind of see there, there is a bit of a gap, and that was because the Camino Clone Trooper had butterfly joints, and this has traded those out just for a standard hinge and swivel. You don't have that butterfly. Uh, it's not a big deal to me. That gap doesn't really bother me. Potentially, in, like down the road, if they go forward with this being more of a standard clone body that they use, we might see this retooled to better accommodate that. But such as it is, it doesn't really bother me. When you're looking at it straight on or even three quarters, you really don't notice that. At the bicep, you have a swivel side to side. Then down at the elbows, you have that really nice Captain Rex crunch that gets you well past 90 on both elbows. I absolutely love that redesign. Comparing it to what we got before, they definitely made an improvement when they first released that Captain Rex mold, and I'm glad they're using it going forward. And then down to the hands, you have a hinge and swivel all the way around, hinge up and down on the right hand, and then hinge in and out on the left hand, just like I prefer it. It's just the best way to have hands set up, in my opinion, because this allows it to kind of tilt the weapon up and down, and then this allows it to kind of grip the weapon a little closer to the body. Down at the torso, there is a ball joint. You don't really get much side to side, but you do get some forward and back crunch. Down at the hips, ball joint, thigh swivel. You can swivel that forward, kick the armor out. You can get it all the way to there, but of course with these knees being double jointed, they kind of bend at a 45 degree angle. You can't swivel them down to be straight up and down, which is part of the reason why I prefer that new clone trooper mold. That single jointed knee is really great because you can get clone troopers into a uh, into a kneeling position, which you can't do on this particular mold. And then moving down to the foot, you have the hinge and rocker, so you can hinge it forward to there. Because of this old clone shin, you can't point the toes, which is really a frustration with this old mold. It's the one thing on this figure that could be improved upon. They could keep everything from this torso up and have that be the standard and then just swap these legs out for the, the, for the new legs, and I would be 100% happy with this being the standard clone trooper mold. The proportions would be great, the articulation in the knees and ankles will be fantastic, and that would just be the ultimate clone trooper in the Black Series line. And now there is one thing that I've been noticing with specifically this jet trooper. I think just about everyone has encountered this on theirs that I've seen, you know, through Instagram and whatever. Everyone's uh, shin guards are backwards for, for some reason. I It's just a factory error, I guess. But basically these lower leg portions need to be swapped and then the feet need to be swapped over to the correct side. Uh, opposite, basically. So you got to heat these up, pop those pins out, 
uh, replace the legs and then pop the feet off and swap them back over because you're, you know, switching the legs over. And you can really kind of see even the paint apps are lined up to better be suited on the opposite side. You can see also the way that the, the shin kind of kicks outward when it should be kicking inward a little bit. At first glance, it may not be super noticeable, but when you compare it to the other clone molds, you can definitely tell that these shins are, for whatever reason, just on the wrong legs. But you know, it's one of those things that's small enough, if you really don't mind it, you could just keep the guys the way they are, just keep them standard just like this. If it really does bother you, I think it's an easy enough fix just to heat them up, pop the feet off, pop those pins out, swap them around. You know, it's, it's very simple with some hot water and just a little bit of patience. It's just one of those things that is you know, minor enough that you could live with it, but it's also easy enough that you could fix it. So there we have the Jet Trooper from Battlefront 2, the 2015 version, of course. I absolutely love this figure. I think this one is definitely worth picking up. Again, it's a GameStop exclusive, retails for $26.99, I believe. The price increase from your standard Black Series is a little steep, but I will say with this particular figure, the sculpt work and the paint apps really do make it worth it. The only thing that I wish it included additionally to what it has here would be the rocket launcher. Cause I mean, that's so iconic to the character from the game. He could really use a rocket launcher. You could probably 3D print something, but at that price point, I really wish it was included. And that would be my only major gripe with this figure. And a really cool lineup in comparison we can do now is this, the 501st Legion. This is the archive 501st Black Series Trooper. This is Captain Rex, the uh, just the standard release of Captain Rex. And the three of these together look amazing. The only thing that I noticed really is that the blue is different between each character. Like this is more of a Revenge of the Sith light blue 501st. This is more of game accurate dark blue. And this is more Clone Wars like mid blue. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't really matter that much. I think on a shelf, these three look amazing together. So again, it's more of a, a perfectionist nitpick. And I think to the general consumer, you're really not even going to pay attention to that. I guess it's more of those, like, if you're really nerdy about the, the different depictions of clone troopers and how they change between different properties, then you might care. But overall, they look great. On a shelf, this looks awesome. And I really am excited to hopefully get a couple more of these. I do have two of these already, and you really don't need two Captain Rexes. So the 501st Black Series collection is really nice. And I really do hope that they fill out more legions with a lineup like this. You know, a basic trooper a commander or leader of some kind, and then some sort of maybe specialist trooper. They really could do this with like re-releasing the 212th, uh, re-releasing Commander Fox and the Shock Trooper, and maybe doing some new legions as well. But this is what really makes army building fun. And while I'm primarily a three and three quarter inch collector, so I already have all of these, you know, in that line, uh, you know, Black Series collectors need some love too, and this is the perfect way to do it. I think that if Hasbro would do something like that, they would make a lot of fans happy, especially clone fans. And now we move on to Clone Commando Boss, a figure that I don't really know what to say about it. I think that it is a nice figure. I will have a lot of critiques on this figure, unfortunately. I don't want to have a lot of critiques because I want to love it. I love Republic Commando. I love Commando Boss. But unfortunately, this figure just leaves a lot to be desired. This figure, once again, retails for $26.99, a price point that I am less comfortable with for this particular figure. You know, with the Jet Trooper, we got a lot of really nice paint apps. We also got a unique kit bash of molds. And with this, we get a reuse of Hunter basically from the neck down with a new clone sculpted head. And it it just kind of leaves some something to be desired, especially when you consider that this is a gaming greats Republic Commando boss, and this is almost entirely a Clone Wars style commando. Now to start things off with what I like about this character, the orange is really accurate. It looks nice in terms of the shade that they chose. The new helmet sculpt also looks really nice. It just, it captures what a Republic Commando helmet looks like. It even has the nice like groove lines running through it. And the visor has this really nice metallic blue paint on it. It emulates a little bit of what the game has, even though they glow in the game. You know, that gives it that nice sheen, more reflective. Looks really, really cool. And I would say this head is exactly what we needed for a Republic Commando Black Series figure. That said, I don't know. I just wish that we got more of this with the rest of the body. But unfortunately, they chose to just reuse the Hunter mold from the Bad Batch. Even the backpack is a remold of him as well. 
and it just doesn't really fit with Republic Commandos, I feel. The Commandos, of course, were more bulky, their armor was much heavier than a standard clone trooper, so this guy being more skinny and sleek like Hunter just doesn't feel quite accurate for what we should be getting with a Republic Commando. And because this is Hunter, this is a much more animated style of armor, especially in the chest plate and the forearms. These are very, very animated, very stylized. Also, the shoulder pads are too. I forgot about that. They, you know, they've painted on this little silver stripe here. That should be like a sculpted piece of hardware, but instead it's just painted on over top of a very animated, plasticky looking shoulder pad. Now that's just very unfortunate. And they've even gone so far as to mimic the paint apps of the Clone Wars Republic Commando, not the uh, not the realistic game style, which is very strange for this to be a, a gaming greats Republic Commando, and yet it has the markings of the more stylized version of Commando Boss. We can see this much more clearly on the Fixer that was just announced. That one clearly uses the Clone Wars animation style of paint apps, whereas... This, it's it's similar, it's much more similar between the two, and it's harder to notice, but with Fixer, it's very clear they've gone and looked at the, uh, at the Clone Wars and not the game, which is so bizarre to me. I don't really understand that choice at all, but at least with Boss, it's less noticeable because the markings are pretty similar between the two. Something that is very strange with this figure as well, with the paint apps, is this like darker orange stripe that runs across his chest. It's almost as if maybe they went for two passes with the paint app machine, you know, however they apply it, probably with a pad printer, and it was like offset a little bit or something. I don't know, it just is darker on that little stripe right there. And I'm curious to see if other people got the same result with their figure, kind of like with the shins on the Jet Trooper, but I don't know. Again, it's just one of those things that at the price point for this figure, I would like to see more quality control and more accuracy to the source material. And this might be a little too nitpicky, but there's a couple things that really frustrate me with the reuse of the Hunter mold, and that would be these forearms, you know, he's got like the comm length there, and it's just, it's sculpted wrong, he has no elbow pads, and then over here he has the hole for the, the knife that Hunter has, like, attached there, and then they also reuse the knees, which are just the wrong shape for a Republic Commando. So those are the things that just completely fall apart for reusing this mold. Like, they could have gotten away with the torso and the shoulders, I think, but if they had just changed out the forearms and the knees, I would have been okay with that, but with all this reuse, it just does not work for an accurate, even a Clone Wars accurate, Republic Commando. Now, I suppose if you disregarded all the source material from the game and the Clone Wars, you do have a pretty cool Clone Trooper figure here. Like, just in general, it has good articulation, it has some cool paint apps, it has a nice look, but if you're familiar or nostalgic with either the Clone Wars or the game, especially the game, because I'm going to reiterate this a lot in this review, this is the Gaming Greats line, and we got a Clone Wars animated series Republic Commando, but, you know, if you're familiar with any of that, you're going to be, I think, disappointed with this. You know, it just it doesn't have the features that should be there. So while it's a cool figure and definitely will do the job, I guess, of filling a commando spot on someone's shelf, I think that it's just leaving a lot to be desired. But with all that said, we do still have to go over accessories and, of course, the articulation on this figure. So first up, he has his DC-17 rifle. Uh, I guess <laughs> I'm not quite done with the complaints because this is severely undersized, but that was something I said with Hunter and Wrecker before, so it's not unique to this figure particularly. They just need to upscale this probably at least double because this is way too small. Even for the animated series, it's way too small of a DC-17. In fact, you could pretty much use this for the 3 and 3 quarter inch Republic Commando. However, the sculpt work is really nice here. It does look very accurate, very sleek. I do appreciate all the sculpt work that went into this. I just, again, think that it's scaled down way too much. Moving on to the backpack, it does just peg onto his back just like Hunter's because this is a straight up recast of that. Um, I don't know if there's anything inaccurate with them using this for Boss and with Hunter. It's probably inaccurate for one of them, but I really couldn't tell you which one. Unfortunately, there are some sloppy paint apps here. You got this uh, silver part here, which is also a Clone Wars animated thing and not a game thing, but they basically didn't paint any of this side right here. Like, that is all just white plastic bleeding through. You can see a little bit of overspray, but that's really it. And on this side, it's, uh, well, there's some places that it bleeds through, but for the most part, it is 
painted and the head is just a solid head there is no clone trooper head underneath this this is a solid cast and i do appreciate that they went that direction rather than having the risk of it being you know misshapen because there's an unpainted head glued under there now for articulation you have the double ball joint at the head the ball joint down at the neck so you get some side to side tilt you get forward you get backwards just to there you of course can look side to side and, you know, just getting up close, that helmet looks so, so good. Like, that's what's really disappointing, is how good this helmet looks compared to what the rest of the figure looks like. Moving down to the shoulders, you have the free-floating shoulder pads that kind of, like, grab onto the arm as you swivel it, so you can kind of move it around without doing too much damage. This one was a little bit warped out of the packaging, but that's something very fixable. I'll just have to dip it in some hot water and, you know, reshape it a little bit. But you have the hinge and swivel, so you can swivel this all the way around. You can move that shoulder pad with it. You can hinge it up well past 90, and then down at the elbow, you have the single-jointed elbow that can go from there all the way into there. I do really like how much range these new clone troopers have with their elbows. That's just something really nice. Then moving down to the hands, hinge and swivel all the way around, in and out for this hand up and down for this hand. At the torso, you have a ball joint. You get that nice side-to-side -side tilt forward and back. I do really like how much range of motion you have here. Just It feels very agile for a commando, especially for a commando like Hunter, where he's you know known for being a little bit more sleek and active with his mobility. Moving down to the hips, though, we have a ball joint and a thigh swivel. You can get it up to there, kick it out a little bit, get it up to there, and then you can bring the knee down the single jointed knee has the hinge and swivel, so starting from here, you can bend it down, swivel it down, and then do the same here, and you can get the clone into a perfect kneeling position. Again, that is what I absolutely love about the new clone trooper mold. I just wish they used these knees on the jet trooper, and I wish that they had made these more accurate to clone commando boss. Then moving down to the foot, you have the hinge and the rocker, point to there, forward to there, and side to side rocker just like that. So all in all, you know, the articulation here is really nice. This figure has a solid range of motion. Again, I think this mold works really well for Hunter. He's much more of an agile character. For Boss, it works. Apart from its inaccuracies, you know, it does work, but it just, it's so inaccurate. That's the hard part. It's really hard to look past this, especially as someone like myself who grew up with the games where, you know, it's a uh, it's a nostalgic thing. I really wish I could love this because it'd be cool to have a a one twelfth scale, a six inch scale Commando boss. You know, for the collection, for the Black Series shelf. But unfortunately, this just it, oh man, it just isn't really that good. I think if you really wanted a Commando in your collection, you should get the Toys R Us exclusive three and three quarter inch Commando. This is way more accurate to what they should look like. I think the only inaccuracy I ever spotted was that. This shoulder pad should be much more bulky. It's like a unique shoulder pad to Commando Boss. But ultimately, this is the best version of a Clone Commando we've ever gotten. Swivel legs, bend at the knees, shoulders that can actually, like, you know, kick out to 90 degrees in, in the 3 and 3 quarter inch scale, which is really nice to see. Uh, could they update it? Absolutely. I would love to see a vintage collection Commando, but for the time and for what this is, I still think this is the definitive clone commando mold. I'm very happy to finally have the full Delta Squad in this mold, and these will be much more likely to be displayed on my shelf than whenever we get all four members of the Black Series Delta Squad. It's just so much closer to the game than than this one here, so yeah, it's, it's unfortunate because, I again, I really do want to like this. I bought this figure being skeptical but open-minded, and having it in hand now, it's really only just a letdown, unfortunately. But there we have it, two new figures in the Black Series 6-inch line, the Gaming Greats line specifically, and I think they look pretty cool. Like, we have one that's an obvious standout here. I absolutely love this Jet Trooper. I would say, you know, if you had to get one of these get the Jet Trooper. 100% get the Jet Trooper. Like I said before, it's nice to get any clone trooper in the Black Series line or the 3 and 3 quarter inch line, but I just wish that we got more clones like this and less clones like this. I will say that the trend seems to be going more in this direction, but since we have three more clone commandos to get through for Delta Squad, I think that that this is going to be repeated quite often, unfortunately, and you hate to see it, especially for something as beloved as Delta Squad. You hate to see them reuse very inaccurate parts for the characters. But that's just my take, and I would love to hear what you guys think down in the comments below. 
And also, if you want to follow me over on Instagram, there's a link down in the description. It takes you right there. There's also a couple other things in that link tree if you want to check those out. As always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to keep up with this channel, hit the notification bell. And as always, have a wonderful evening, noon, or night, depending on when you're watching this video. And I will be sure to catch you all in the next video. Mm -hmm.